hour on I-24 News, the leader of Lebanon's Hezbollah, which is backed by Iran, is now accusing Saudi Arabia of declaring war. Hezbollah charges at Saudi Arabia, which hosted the Lebanese prime minister for his resignation. But that was unprecedented. Plus, the United States will no longer turn a blind eye to violations, cheating, or economic aggression. We will no longer tolerate the audacious theft of intellectual property. President Trump talks tough on trade, putting America first during his speech at the Apex Summit in Vietnam. And in Sri Lanka, dozens of ethnic Tamils bear the scars of torture and rape reportedly inflicted by the country's own government and military. From the I-24 News Studios in Times Square in New York, this is Crossroads with David Schuster and Shana Estulin. And hello, everybody. Tal Heinrich is in this evening for Shana. Good to have you here, as always. Good to be here. There are, new, uh, there are now multiple reports that Saudi Arabian-led coalition warplanes just attacked the defense ministry in Yemen's capital of Sana'a. In Yemen's civil war, this is an area that is controlled by Houthi rebels who are backed by Iran. The airstrike comes in the wake of the Houthi rebels firing a missile from Yemen on Saturday that headed towards Saudi Arabia's capital. The United States has joined Saudi Arabia in blaming Iran from the miss for the missile. A top U.S. Air Force general says the missile, which Saudi Defense Forces shot down, had markings indicating it was manufactured by Iran. To discuss all this, let's bring in our Tel Aviv correspondent, Yoav Borowitz. And Yoav, what is the latest, what more do we know about the Saudi-led airstrike on Yemen's capital? Well, David, it has been reported that the Saudi-led coalition today carried out two airstrikes on the defense ministry in Yemen's capital, Sana'a. There are fears of civilian casualties as nearby buildings were also reportedly hit. The strikes come amid tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which backs the Houthi militants in Yemen. So the coalition shut down Yemen's borders earlier this week after Saudi forces on Saturday intercepted a ballistic missile fired by the Houthis near the Riyadh airport. And you have a senior Israeli government minister has revealed that Israel is planning a diplomatic offensive to step up pressure on Iran. Can you tell us more about it? This is correct, Al. Senior Israeli government member, Intelligence Minister Israel Katz has said that Israel is planning a diplomatic offensive to step up pressure on Iran and Hezbollah at the United Nations. Minister Katz said that he believes conditions are ripe now to take a stand against Iranian actions in the region. Israel wants the world to tightly enforce a 2006 ceasefire agreement that called on Hezbollah to disarm and stay away from the Israeli border. Yoav Borovitz in Tel Aviv, thank you for this. And to discuss the growing tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran, we're now joined on set by Tara Kanargulu, international journalist. Tara, this is another development in the power struggle between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Um, we see it playing out in Yemen. We see it playing out in, in Lebanon. One thing is sure, I think we can no longer call this standoff a cold war. I mean, what you see is... Uh a replication of what we saw a few months ago with Qatar. Uh, you mentioned Yemen. Yemen has been going on for the last uh, two years. Uh, in this uh, instance, we saw a few months ago uh, Saudi Arabia and its friends really isolated Qatar. And the main intention was to get back to Iran. And Lebanon is a country that its president, Michel Aoun, who is supported by Hezbollah vis-à-vis uh, -vis Iran, uh, is a country that essentially uh, supports Iran and the Iranian regime and vice versa. So this is a deliberate, uh, essentially, attack on Iran by Saudi Arabia, similar to how they did with Qatar. So whether it's Yemen that's caught in the middle or Qatar or Lebanon, is it fair to say that this is a Sunni-Shia split? Sunnis, of course, essentially dominate in Saudi Arabia, Shiites dominate in Iran. 
Uh, that's an interesting point, David. When you look at Lebanon, a, a country of five million, uh, you have an interesting political structure. The president is a, a Christian Maronite. You have the Sunni being the prime minister, in this case, Saad Hariri, and the speaker of the parliament being a Shia Muslim. Now, in the last two years, Lebanon was a country that had no president. Now, suddenly, since last December, you have uh, the president be being backed by the Shias. Now, being a Sunni-Shia divide, right now, a lot of Saad Hariri supporters who are Sunnis are frustrated at the situation. And that's precisely what Saudi Arabia or whoever party that is trying to create uh, volatility in Lebanon wants to have. A, si a Shia-Sunni divide, which, similar to 2006, led to uh, that conflict that was witnessed uh, back uh, in 20 2006. So, Tara, if we look at this as proxy wars between Iran and Saudi Arabia taking place in different locations around the Middle East, like Yemen, Syria, even Lebanon, how far away, this is what I want to ask you, do you think, are we from seeing this war actually taking place in the territories of these two countries? That's an important point, and I think a lot of people are waiting to hear that. But for us, we have to look at the facts, right? We can compare this to 2006 and say, okay, a war is looming. But you have to look at how uh, Hassan Nasrullah is responding to this, the head of, the head of Hezbollah. Uh, he came out and said, referring to Saad Hariri, who is in Saudi Arabia right now, who by many, the Sunni and Shias inside Lebanon, who I spoke with uh, today in the, last, uh, in the past week, uh, saying that he's under house arrest. Uh, Hassan Nasrullah is saying, referring to him as the prime minister still, and they want him to come back. So he has a sort of common calculated voice. Then look at Iran. Iran is not uh, loudly waging war against Saudi Arabia, and they're being very diplomatic about it because precisely they don't want that military confrontation. And today, Iranian foreign minister, being in Uzbekistan, uh, alluded to uh, Saudi's new, you know, king in town or the decision maker, uh, the young prince uh, Salman, saying young authorities in certain countries are creating and uh, leading bad decisions. So yes, he means Saudi, but is war looming? That's yet to be seen. The most violent proxy war, of course, has been in Yemen, where yes. there are now something like you know, 7 million people who are starving, 20 million who need food assistance, uh, tens of thousands who have been killed in this proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. They're at essentially a stalemate. Um, did it cross a the line, therefore, when a missile launched from Yemen went towards the Saudi capital and has the markings of being made in Iran? I think this is not the first time we're seeing this, right? This has been ongoing and vice versa. Saudi strike, Iran strike. So this is nothing new. But what's new, and I want to point out to you, is how Saudi Arabia closed all crossings to Yemen. And that is only creating more pressure on this, like you said, humanitarian crisis. The proxy war between Iran and Saudi will continue until whether there's a diplomatic resolution to this or, like you said, more military confrontation. But it's been ongoing and only the people are really witnessing the toll. Mm. All right, Tara Kangurlo. Tara, thanks for coming in. Good to have you. She's an Thank international so journalist. Great to have her in studio. Thanks. Coming up on Crossroads, Hezbollah, which is backed by Iran, is joining the condemnation of Saudi Arabia. Hezbollah says the Saudi kingdom has declared war on Lebanon. Plus, the problems are growing in the special counsel investigation for former Trump national security advisor Michael Flynn, defense attorneys say, who is part of a Turkish plot during the Trump administration to work for Turkey. We'll explain.